Hi everyone, it's Emma and Liv, and we're your meta sidekicks. And today we're going to be talking about the six steps to a spiritual awakening. Oh, there are six. <laughs> I don't know how I kept it in six. <laughs> wow. I wrote six just as a guess. So if, if you guys are new to our podcast, I'm Liv, I'm a psychic medium, and this is Em. Em, say hi. Yo, what's up? And she's a psychic intuitive, <laughs> psychic medium. <clears throat> Whatever the fuck that means. <laughs> it's been six months and uh, we're twin flames. Um, don't click off. I promise. Listen to the other episodes. It'll explain so much. But we're going to be talking about a spiritual awakening because that is why Em is figuring out that she's a medium is mm -hmm. because of her spiritual awakening. Yeah. So first off, I want to explain that this is my experience Spiritual awakenings are a personal journey, and this is something that will look differently for each person individually. So there are some people that are going to go through the exact same process that I went in the exact same order. There are people that are going to do it out of order. There are going to be people that are just literally going to wake up and just see spirits. So I want you to take this with, like, I don't know. You don't take this as law. This is my experience this is to help people understand what they may or may not be going through because this is a hard journey to take you're a hard journey to take <laughs> careful there why you gotta keep that pg it is pg <laughs> you were thinking other things no i was not i <laughs> was thinking about a hard journey and that if you wanted to figure out where you need to go on that journey maybe you should take out your pendulum in the map of your house and figure out oh, where that journey <laughs> went because it's been lost for two weeks, and you're like, God damn it, I know I set it down somewhere. Check Let's out our last podcast. <laughs> <laughs> so let's get into the steps. The first step, I would say, is the transition. This is where you wake up, and from my experience, something drastically needs to change. So a lot of people have been saying that the veil is thin, and that there are so many people that are waking up nowadays, and... uh. It's generally because of the pandemic. The pandemic is something that has been a drastic change in a lot of people's lives. Even if you might th not think that it's like a tragic change or something, it's something that makes your life not seem real anymore. It's kind of something you're not used to, and it's giving you that like... Perspective? Like, it's like the rug is being pulled out from underneath you, so to speak. Everything you know is now different. And for example, my transition was not the pandemic. It was actually before that. I moved out of my childhood home and I quit a job that I was at for a very long time. And the reason why this was one of those big transitions in my life was because my childhood home had a lot of trauma that I held there because I had a lot of negative experiences when I was younger. And just being in that environment made me feel like I could not realize why that was happening or realize how to kind of heal from that. And I also was in a job that was not exactly the most great job for me. It was a little bit of a toxic environment. And leaving that as well allowed me to finally be able to heal my trauma. It was kind of like now that you are not in your trauma, you don't have to have this substantial wall trying to protect yourself from this trauma. You now can put your walls down and realize the world and life is not as hard as it, you need it to be. Does that make sense? Or that it has been. Yeah. But essentially what is happening at this stage is your ego is kind of taking a hit. It kind of has like a crack in it, so to speak. And... The reason why this happens is because when you have this drastic change, your ego that has been explaining things to you for this long now can't explain things to you, if that makes sense. It does make sense because the whole reason people usually don't see metaphysical or perceive the metaphysical things around them is because of their ego. It is the wall that inhibits its, your sight. So... A drastic change in your life could be you moving to a new house. It could be a health change. It could be a job change, maybe a pandemic, so to speak. But it's something that almost makes your life seem like it's not the same anymore. Like something has drastically changed your life. And 
this changes it, like I said, because your ego now doesn't know how to explain your life because it had a certain standard that it was keeping up. But now it can't do that anymore. So for me, that wall was I need to be this perfect person at all times. And then moving away from that and moving away from the things that cost me trauma was very much like now I don't have to be that person anymore but I don't know who I am without that. So like I've said before in previous podcasts, I have this coping mechanism or this mask. I'm not sure if that's the right word, but it's where I essentially mask to be the person that the person I'm talking to wants me to be. So I put on a mask so that they will like me better. And because of that, I have identity issues now because I am so good at masking that I want to be these other people. I have created like personas of who I should be for each one of these people. But going through this transition, I now don't know who I am. I My life does not make sense and my ego can't explain it. You want me to give my two cents? I got to think about the next thing so yeah (laughs) oh yeah I can resonate with that I uh do masking too because I'm a Leo and uh Mm -hmm. a lot of us feel that we need to be a leader at a moment's notice so we always have this sort of false sense of confidence that we portray which comes off as arrogance to other people that don't know what's going on because they're not Leos um but the reason we act so confident and boisterous and outgoing is because we need to establish ourselves as a point of contact in case somebody needs something at any point in time. So it's not necessarily that we're all confident and arrogant or self-centered. It's just that we need you to know that we know what's going on at all times in case somebody needs help. So that's masking basically. (laughs) So what else? I understand too about how you feel like you need to be a certain person for certain people because that's a uh, trigger trauma response and most spiritual awakenings are getting over and healing from trauma and uh, I resonate with that as well because of childhood things of having to mediate other people's emotions and be something for someone else so that they can feel safe whereas It's not our job as human beings to mediate other people's emotions. And it's easier, much easier said than done. So then at the end of the day, after years and years and years and your entire childhood of being what other people need, you don't know what you need, only how to take care of others. And you also don't know who you are or what you want to be because you've been something else for someone else. Like me, I would say one of the biggest things about that is the way I dress. What do you mean? The way I want to dress is very, very much different than the way I was raised to dress because I mimicked the people in my household. And when I wanted to dress a certain way, they would tell me that it was ugly or gross. So. Yeah, it makes sense. Yeah. So now I want to dress a certain way. But once I do, I have confidence issues about it because I'm like, that's not who I am. But actually, it is who I am. But it's not what I was raised to think that I need to be. not what you think people want you to be. Yes. Yeah. So a lot of people come to me and ask, well, how are you starting to see things? Like, I want to go through a spiritual awakening. Can you help me? And honestly, I don't think this is something that you can control. It's something that is, I don't know, written in your soul contract if you're going to wake up or not. But like I said, there are people that just wake up, but... I would say a lot of people need to go through this transitional period where they have this life-changing experience. And because it's something that you can't avoid and it's something you can't control, it's not something that you can just randomly start waking up from, if that makes sense. There needs to be a trigger. Yeah. <laughs> I, well, people are like, did you learn to be a psychic medium? No. It, I, I was born this way. Sorry. Um, you're not going to learn how to have a spiritual awakening. Awakening, It's going to happen or it's not. Make sense? Yeah. Is that what you're saying? Well, yeah. It's, it's like I didn't have control over moving and now feeling all of my traumas. It just 
is something that happened and I had to deal with it. It wasn't something that I could control. It's something I needed to do. Yeah. So that leads into the next stage, which is the existential crisis stage. <laughs> oh my God. Literally every day of my life is an existential crisis. I want to write a song, TM, 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 or a poem, TM, 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 that is literally called existential existence because that's my life. So like I said, with this transitional period, you up until this point have been living your life a very specific way and something literally pulled the rug out from underneath you and now you have no idea what is going on, why you are doing this because a lot of the times you are doing things in your life because it helps or it pleases other people. And that is your ego telling you you should be a certain way and you should do a certain thing based on societal and culture because that is going to make you fit in. But when you start having a spiritual awakening, you start having these like existential crises of, am I really in this job for me or am I in this job because someone told me that it would look good for me? So... This is where you start asking a lot of questions that don't necessarily have answers. And it's kind of like a lot of identity and finding yourself. You have anything, anything to say about that? Yeah, that was me at college uh, <laughs> junior <I'm> year. <laughs> <laughs> Makes sense. It's like my parents told me I had to go to college. It was never an option to not go to college. And then when I told them what I wanted to go to college for, they were like, that's dumb. You're going to go to college for this because you're better than that. And I was like, yeah, I'm better than that. So then I went to college for what they told me to go to college for. And then I was like, this is horrible. Everything's on fire. Also, college it is, is, a, is a bad place. It's a very bad, scary place with bad, scary people. And I want to go home, but home is not a home because there's bad, scary people at home too. So what am I doing? Also, wh I want to buy clothes, but I don't have money to buy clothes because I'm a Leo. But a lot of people in this stage kind of don't know what to do. They don't know how to find themselves. They just have a lot of questions. And we have made a video that kind of guides you down this path or kind of helps you with your spiritual awakening. And that's where we talk about chakras and your spirit guides. So if you use the chakra system to kind of guide your questions and how you are healing for yourself, it will help you understand the things that have happened to you and understand why you are a certain way. Yeah, we explained in our Spirit Guide podcast how the chakras can help unlock your spiritual awakening because if you learn about the chakras, which you can do from our chakra podcast and video because it's very different from what you'll find on the internet, we tried very hard to not be Western about it um, as much as two white girls in the basements can be. And each chakra deals with a certain aspect about yourself. And basically spiritual awakenings are therapy. They call it like shadow work or something in the metaphysical world, but it basically is just therapy. And learning about each chakra will help you learn where your emotions come from. Because usually when you go to therapy, you're like, I have all these emotions and I don't know what to do with them. And literally what therapists do is help you figure out where those are emotions are coming from so that you can deal with them and move on. So you don't have to deal with just these emotions that are bombarding you from what seems like nowhere. So these chakras, learning the chakras are going to kind of be like your own therapist. For me, the Moldahar chakra is a big problem and it deals with safety, security, and having your basic needs met, such as like food, water, and shelter. And I think that's more my Moldahar chakra being uh, influenced by epigenetics because I had grandparents that were from the um, Great Depression so I feel like epigenetically I'm influenced by their lives. Uh, and if you don't know what epigenetics is, you should look it up because it's great. It's basically things that have happened in your grandparents' lives were so traumatic that they physically changed the genetic structure in their sex cells. So like zygotes and gametes and whatever. And it influences you when you're born. And I know that's not directly because of your parents, but it's indirectly from your grandparents. There's a lot of like cool science into it. But again, learning about the Moldahar chakra, they were like, this is why you feel this way. And I was like, oh my gosh, that makes so much sense. 
and uh, speaking my truth, my throat chakra, which is Fadachana chakra, I believe. And um, that is, I have a lot of emotions from that as well as I, I can't speak up for myself, but I can speak up for other people. Because as a Leo, I like to make other people feel comfortable because as a child too with trauma, I had to mediate other people's emotions and I knew what it was like to feel sad and scared and not have anybody be able to speak up for you. So I'm really good at standing up for other people, but not myself because when I did, it wasn't good sometimes. Yeah. So this kind of leads into the next step, which I kind of feel like the next two steps kind of blend into each other so the first one i have which i'm not sure if this is the one that comes before or after but it's your intuition starts to blossom and this is where you're going to start kind of moving away from ego and you're going to start realizing you have these spiritual gifts which again we've talked about the clairs or the psychic abilities in a different podcast if you want to get a more in-depth conversation going about what psychic abilities you may or may not have because it's different for everybody everybody has different types of clairs in different capacities and they're experienced differently as well but these are the types of questions that are going to start coming up for you is who i am what am i doing here why are things the way that they are and kind of these existential crises questions so to speak but This is where your intuition is going to start blossoming, and you may even start connecting with your spirit guides, which are the people that are going to be your teachers and help you along this process of your spiritual awakening. And by people, we mean spiritual beings, because they're not always human spirits. Right. But they're going to be like, I've been trying to talk to you for so long, and now you can see me. To which (laughs) they talk to you regardless of if you hear them or not, (laughs) or if you know you hear them or not. (laughs) And we talk about that in other podcasts, too, if you're new. Yes. So that step also goes into the next one, which is the ego death. Now, we have been talking about ego. Ego is that little voice in your head that says that you need to be a certain person and do certain things because it'll make other people comfortable. It will allow you to fit into your society or your culture. And that is not necessarily allowing you to be who you really are. It kind of skews your behaviors to fit a group instead. So with the ego death, it is exactly what it sounds like. You are essentially picking apart your ego. And when I was doing this research, my spirit guides were showing me the thing that I see that they show me with my intuitive gifts and things like that. So when I go into my my medium space, so to speak, I see a ring around me, but further away, I see this like wall that looks like a mirror and it reflects my environment. And they explain this as this is your ego. It doesn't allow you to see anything beyond the wall and you don't know the wall is there because it is reflecting what is on the inside. So it reflects your environment. So kind of like how mirrors are in restaurants to make them look bigger. You think the restaurant is bigger because it is reflecting the inside of the restaurant. You kind of have to destroy that wall in order to move past your ego. And you do this by defining what is called your shadow self. So like Liv mentioned, The spiritual community likes to talk about shadow work in your shadow self. And essentially what your shadow shadow self is, is it's all the parts of you that you do not want to see or accept. So there are the parts, for example, of like us where we were uncomfortable being like these spiritual people and telling people that we can talk to dead people and all these things. Those are the things that we are hiding because other people do not accept them. So these are the types of things that we need to now understand. They are not a bad thing. They are truly who we are, and they're things that we need to learn and deal from. And this does not just entail your own life. It will be affected by your past lives as well. So throughout your past lives, you will carry their traumas into this life as well. But like we said, with the chakra system, this is kind of like your checklist of 
where you should start and how you should go through this process so that you can realize where you're blocked and realize where you aren't really truly understanding yourself and where you are coming from. But yes, go to our spirit guide video and check out how we lead you through your chakras in order for you to understand where your trauma is coming from. But this is probably the hardest stage to kind of go through because it is exactly what it sounds like. It feels like you're dying because you essentially have to go through all of the traumas of your past and you have to go through them again. So I don't know if people- But now you're aware of it. You're not just like trying to survive it. You're aware of it and you have to like reflect on it, which is hard because sometimes you don't remember what your trauma was because you blocked it. Yeah, it's kind of like when you go- I don't know. It's like when people have traumatic things happen to them and then they have to go to court and relive it. That's essentially what you're doing in this stage is you're reliving your trauma, but you have to process it and accept your trauma for what it is. So like Liv said, instead of just surviving it, you need to understand and accept it because it is not a dark part of you. It is something you needed to go through. But this stage is very much like It's like watching your life flash before your eyes. And it's because you have to experience all of those traumas that you had once again. And this is a step that is very deep on personal development. And this is something that necessarily won't stop. This is something that you have to continue to make changes to and continue to evolve. Because you're going to experience things that your ego is going to explain away. Because even though you're going through a spiritual awakening, you still have ego. It's just you're trying to pick apart the ego that you have created up until this point. Do you have anything to say about that one? It's just making me think about how my entire college experience was a spiritual awakening. (laughs) Really? (laughs) Yeah. That would make sense. Did things change for you during your college experience? Like, did things get stronger for you? Um, I think they did, but I pushed them down because I was going through a spiritual awakening. (laughs) Makes sense. Because yeah. I didn't know anything metaphysical, or I didn't even know spiritual awakenings were a thing at that point. You know what I'm saying? You know what I'm saying? But yeah, I had one big traumatic event trigger all of the past traumatic events, and only through trying to heal from that one big traumatic event that happened in college, I learned and it validated all of the other traumatic events that I went through as a child. This leads to our next stage. The next stage is where you are starting to feel lost because you have this new identity. So you, up until this point, like I keep saying, have had this identity that your ego has mapped out for you. So you are trying to be this perfect person that everybody sees you as, but that's not who you truly are on the inside. And you don't want to be this person because you're afraid that it's not going to be accepted. Well, now everything has been shattered around you. Nothing makes sense. And you are now going through this spiritual awakening that is allowing you to be who you are because this ego that you've built up for so long makes no sense and when you are in this stage it kind of feels like a void almost because you're kind of like I am not this person that my ego tells me that I am but because I played this part for so long I don't know who I am now so for me I wear a mask for every single person that I meet it is essentially figuring out who I am without the mask on do you wear a mask for me (laughs) (laughs) I would assume so. (laughs) That's fair. Well, if you want to get to the deep darks, I'm autistic, so I don't understand how to emotionally connect with someone. And that is why I create masks, because I was taught at a young age that it is not okay for me to be this mundane person. So I put on masks based on how you act to me. So whatever your personality is, I usually will reflect that personality back at you. And that is also why girls do not get diagnosed as much as boys do, because girls are a lot better at doing that and masking. So Because you're taught to. Yes, but I also feel like girls are a little bit more observant. Mm-hmm. And I don't know, like the culture of girls, they 
feel like they need to be fit like fit in better but essentially what happens for me is that I do that and then once I get comfortable with someone the mask comes off and that's when I usually lose friends because they're like you're not like me anymore I don't understand who you are you were fake the entire time when in actuality I just have autism and that's just <laughs> how it works so I have a mask for you but I would say most of the time I don't have the mask because I'm comfortable with you. Does that make sense? Yeah. Like, yeah. <laughs> I feel like I also bring you out of your comfort zone too a lot. Mm-hmm. Because you're my twin flame. <laughs> I literally stare at my trauma constantly. <laughs> makes sense. <laughs> and that's why uh, every time people, when people meet you, they're like, she's a bitch. She has resting bitch face she seems like she hates everything and i'm like no it's just emily it's also very much when i meet people i evaluate who they are before they even say uh, two words to me and if i don't like what i see i will put up a wall mask for them where it's do not talk to me we don't want to talk but it's not in a rude way it's very much like you're not going to get any information from me. And a lot of people are like, you're not going to be vulnerable, so you're not, you're going to be two-faced almost. Like, you're cold. Does Mm. that make sense? Yeah, people usually describe you to me as being cold or aloof or uninterested or negative. And I'm like, she's Those are all autistic traits as well. Uh, That's great. (laughs) Because it's very much like, I don't understand how to emote. Interesting. But that's why I have a mundane voice. That's why when you tell me jokes, I'm not like I know it's my favorite thing about you though. Because I literally do not understand why people have these like emotions and reactions to things because that doesn't make sense to me. It's literally I don't my have favorite that thing. Social development in me. I would have to learn it where other people are born with it. <laughs> makes sense. <laughs> yeah, I love it. It's great. That's why yeah. I was why I wanted to be friends with you. <laughs> <laughs> One of the reasons. Yeah, it's really weird. Cool beans. What's the next one? Hit me with it. I'm not done with this one yet. Oh, it's so long, just like a spiritual awakening. Em and I took well, a short break just to talk about the fact that when I sat down to this podcast, I was like, I'm not going through a spiritual awakening. Oh, I'm perfect. Oh, really? When we sat down, you thought that? Literally, I was like, Lol. I don't I was like, I don't know how I'm gonna have like retrospective banter with Emily because I haven't done this but every time I speak about things like this you're like wait why am I going through this as well yeah you're welcome (laughs) it's a lot spiritual awakenings are hard it's literally therapy yeah this stage essentially is the stage of disconnection because you do not feel connected to your old life but you don't have this connection with who you are now So it is a state of being in a void, feeling lost. Well, it's who you've always been. Yes, but you spent all this time learning who this person with ego is. But now when you're breaking away this ego, it's like you have to meet yourself all over again. Mm -hmm. And it's scary because meeting people is scary, whether it's yourself or somebody else. Because like for me, I have so many masks. I have no idea who I am. No idea. Zero. You're Emily who likes um, the color pink, dragons, anime, punk rock music, screamo music, but also glitter and fairies. And you like stuffed animals as well as pizza and cheese and ice cream. And I like when you don't laugh at my jokes because I laugh at my jokes. So it doesn't matter if you don't laugh. (laughs) But yeah, but that's why like I have so many interests is because... I have no idea what I actually like because I was just told to like things. And you think feet are gross. They are gross. I wish I didn't have them. I really just wish that, you know, like SpongeBob when he comes out or is it Patrick? Patrick has nubs. That's what I need for feet. I just like when he comes out and he's like, look at me. And he has like literally peg legs for all of his arms and legs and like one eye, like two eye patches on. Yeah. So then he makes me think about <laughs> Feet are gross. <laughs> oh, God. <laughs> but there's a lot of myths around spiritual awakenings because they are super trendy. Because people want to, like, open up their third eye and talk to dead people and see spirits and, like, have paranormal experiences. But spiritual awakenings are very much, like, self-development, healing, trauma. They suck. So it's about figuring out who you are and accepting yourself. Yes. 
and the rest will come with it. So, like, the ego death stage and the intuition blossoms stage, they go together because when you are going through your spiritual awakening and going through all of this self-development, you are going to start opening up to the things that were explained away from you, like the spirit realm and the spirits that are around you constantly. So you're going to start having experiences. You don't have to try. It's just going to start happening because you are accepting of the world of the way that it is instead of how society explains it. And who you are. It, okay, cliche examples of spiritual awakenings. Teenage angst, midlife crisis, empty nest syndrome. Three right there. Because in a teenage crisis, you're like, oh my gosh, nothing that my parents told me about the world is true. The world sucks. It's not pretty butterflies. It's like bad people and travesties and hard work and hardships and not enough money. And I feel like teenage angst isn't a spiritual awakening. Really? Yeah, I feel like that is when you start forming an ego because you didn't have an ego before you were a teenager. And that's when you start being like, well, I want to be who I am, but everyone's telling you not to be. And that's why it eventually ends. Because for me, that was the hardest part of my journey as a human is because if I'm autistic and I have these issues with social development, now I'm going through this teenage stage where we're now developing what our personal beliefs are and things like that. And my personal beliefs don't fit the standard of everyone else. So I'm going to start closing myself off to people because now ego is like important and I have to fit in with my environment and with people. I think it could be the other way though too. I understand what you're saying. Yeah. I feel like, yeah, you're trying to develop who you are and people are telling you what to be, but I also feel like there's other things where people have been told what to be their entire life and now they're realizing that it doesn't matter what people say, the world is going to be the way it is and you just want to be who you want to be. Yeah, I don't think that happens when you're a teenager though. Really? Because I think the reason why they have teenage angst is because they're trying to fight the fact of I want to do what I want to do, but my parents are telling me I should do something else. Because they haven't had that up until that point. Because when you start doing that is when you're in eighth grade and you have to pick where you're going to call to high school because that's going to affect your job. You don't need to think about that when you're a kid. I didn't think about where I had to go to high school at. What do you mean? High school or college? High school. What do you mean you had to pick where you went to high school? <laughs> Interesting. <laughs> I literally, we had three elementary schools that all dumped into one middle school. And then once you graduated middle school, you went to the exact same high school as everybody else. Well, when I was 13 in eighth grade and seventh grade, I needed to do all of these tests and I needed to get accepted to my high school and I needed to fix, I needed to pick my high school because my grade school went up to eighth grade. I feel like most people switch for middle school and then go to high school and they have to be accepted into their high school. I also went to private school, so that might yeah, be Yeah, I did not need to get accepted into my public high school. But yeah, but that's what started happening is there is that sounds pressure like college. put onto you. It's college preparatory school. That literally sounds horrible. <laughs> Why would you give an eighth grader a, 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 like make them decide where they needed to go for school? You're welcome. <laughs> that literally sounds saying. like the most egotistical, human, cultural, socio-like, constructed fucking thing in the history of the world. What fucking I'm saying. Jeez. When you're 13, that's when you start having to decide, this is what you're going to be striving for, my dude. You got to start putting yourself in this box. Uh, <laughs> that's horrible. Yeah, and it's literally one of the tests on autism is when you start having these pressures put onto you when you're in, like when you start becoming a teenager that you start having problems with like friendships and like interacting with people because these social cultural things start being pushed onto teenagers. And that's why they are trying to rebel from it because they're like, I was allowed to be who I was like last year. Why do I have to start deciding what I need to be? And why does it have to be this successful job that's going to give me all of these things? Like, I just want to, be a kid. <laughs> I got it. Yeah. So that's why 
teenage angst is that is because they feel this pressure from the adults to start trying to figure out their life. Well, that would explain why I didn't have teenage angst until I was like, yeah, I would a <laughs> junior in high school. Yeah. My childhood, I've had a lot of pressure and that's part of the trauma. <laughs> Gross. Yes. My toesies are cold. Oh. Um, yeah, that sucks. But yeah, that's why I feel like teenage angst starts happening. Um, one of the good things my dad said, and I never really listened because I didn't get to grow up with my dad until mm-hmm. like now, yeah. is do something that makes you happy, not something that makes you money. If you can find something that does both, great, but your happiness and your sanity is more important than money. He's like, even though the world doesn't value it the same way. But a lot of, <laughs> this is where we come into different aspects. I was always told if you make enough money, then you can do whatever the hell you want because you won't be able to afford it otherwise. So it's like riding horses. You need money in order to ride horses. Where are you going to make the money? You can't do it. Mucking out stalls, you're not going to make enough money. Kind of things like that. (laughs) We'll be at my house and it won't be that expensive. Because we're going to make our business successful. (laughs) But there's a lot of different myths also with spiritual awakenings. And one of the things that I want to kind of focus on is we talked about in our manifestation podcast about the frequencies that people are giving off and how it affects the universe and how it like has this pull towards you kind of this like attraction towards you the law of attraction so to speak but this is going to start changing as well because you're going through a spiritual awakening and because you are doing all this self-development You are changing your frequency. You are raising your vibration, so to speak. So you are going to start attracting things that are of similar vibrations. And that also means you are going to push away the things that do not match your vibrations or your frequencies. Hence why people lose a lot of friends and stuff when they go through a spiritual awakening. Because they're like, you have a toxic frequency compared to what I perceive as being good. So sorry and then your friends are like you've changed and it's like yeah my frequency has changed because I am figuring out who I want to be and be comfortable with myself but you don't want that so you want to be friends with my mask versus who I really am yeah but what's interesting and what I found um other people say this as well is if you are in a relationship and you start going through a spiritual awakening if the other person is not doing the same development your relationship is going to change. Whether that be you push them away or you have to start working on things together, your relationship is going to change and it's something that you need to plan on and you need to focus on what is the best option for you. Because like I said, your frequency is going to change and it's going to pull things and it's going to push things away from you. But if you want to hear more about frequencies, check out our manifestation podcast. Yeah. And we have a video, too. Yes. Um, so let's get into the last stage. The last stage is where you are very grounded and... I'm cold and I'm putting the bushing on the heater. You can you hear the bee boo bop bee boo bop <laughs> <laughs> So the next stage, which is stage six, is where you are grounded and understanding... So, essentially, people like to talk about our realm as, like, the Matrix or, like, we're in a big video game, things like that. I I like to think that I'm just stuck inside one big, giant Reese's peanut butter cup. Mm. (laughs) So, when you're in this stage, you start to see, like, the strings being pulled, so to speak, if that makes sense. It's kind of like... If you were in a video game and you started realizing what the game actually entails, it's kind of like if you were the the person behind the controller, but you were also the one, the character in the game. Does that make sense? I think I said that wrong. If I was a character in a game, I'd want to be Yoshi. (laughs) So if you were a character in a game, but you also had the controls... And knew where you were going. That's kind of how the stage works. You understand your soul contract. You start seeing why things happen. You start accepting why 
your trauma has happened because it has put you in a specific a specific position and in it, the Pacific Ocean. A specific position. <laughs> But it has put you in a position where you start understanding what your purpose is and it helps you really fully understand and accept the things that have happened to you so that you are able to get to your main mission, so to speak. And I think people need to understand because as a, a medium, people have been like, I want you to tell me what my purpose is in life. Excuse me? <laughs> what? Like, you live that- as the ability to do <laughs> Exactly. That's um, um, important information that the bottom of the food chain medium would never have access to. Yeah, and if someone tells you that they can tell you what your life purpose is, you don't need that in your life. That is a whole yes. bunch of malarkey. They can give you guidance, but they cannot tell you how your life is going to play out. It's so stupid. Somebody actually asked me, they're like, can you tell me how I'm going to die? Oh, no! Gosh. Why would I want to even know that? No, get out of here. Jesus. Yeah. That would be something that would infringe upon free will. Also, a life's purpose makes me think of like a singular thing. Nobody has a singular life purpose. Your life purpose at one point might have been able to hold might have been to hold open that door at the grocery store for somebody coming out who was like suicidal. And you opening that door made them realize that not every person in the world is a shit person. That might have been a part of your purpose. Your purpose is not having one single job. It's not doing one single thing. It's multifaceted. So for someone to think that they can tell you what your life's purpose is, is ridiculous. It's so inaccurate. please don't think that your life's purpose is singular because it is, is it is not it is dynamic it is multifunctional multifaceted lots of different sides lots of different angles it's not just one thing literally so don't if you're yeah. hearing this please don't think that your life's purpose is singular like i may be a medium but i don't think it's my sole life purpose i think it's a large chunk of the reason that i'm here to help other people but it's not the only reason I'm here. Nobody has a single reason that they've reincarnated or come to this earth, whether it's the first time or the hundredth time. Anyways, yep. I just exactly. felt like that was important to talk well, about. Yeah. <laughs> Makes me angry when people think that they have a singular thing that they're here to do. It's so short-minded. Yeah. Anyways. It's, it's all based upon like your soul contract and your karma and things that have happened in your past lives. So there's a lot of things that go into it, and there's a lot of people pulling strings for you. But when you start getting into this last stage, you start trying, you start seeing the strings being pulled, if that makes sense. So I'm kind of getting to that point where I'm like, this is happening for my own good, but I don't want it to happen because I don't want to go through it. But I understand now that I need to go through it in order for me to grow and in order for me to reach my overall purpose in life, to which I don't know what the purpose is, but I know that things in my life are happening so that I can get to there. Like Emma and I becoming friends and now making a business and eating copious amounts of pizza and ice cream and watching maybe a little bit too much anime, but whatever. Maybe. <laughs> what? Not enough. <laughs> <laughs> Honestly, all I want to do is watch Jujutsu Kaisen. That is it. And My Hero Academia. That's all. That's that's all she wrote. Yeah. So if you guys have any spiritual awakening stories that you would like to share with us, Make sure to go to our website, metapsychics.com. Go to the extras tab and share your stories with us. We are going to be doing a listener story where we tell all of your stories and live may or may not see things for you. <clears throat> I mean, I talked to like, what, four different dead people in the last podcast? <laughs> that makes absolutely no sense. We literally talked about divination tools in our last podcast. So A, check that out. But B, she literally talked to the people that we were researching. <laughs> and then they showed me what they looked like and then I looked up what they looked like and it was and consistent. She <laughs> my pants, guys. <laughs> yeah. Uh, also, 
since we are currently going through a spiritual awakening, uh, I think it would be interesting if you want to psychoanalyze us. Like, oh yeah, literally, I'm quite sure you could get a a really good feel for what a spiritual awakening is like if you just listen to our podcasts or watch our content because we are <laughs> going, we're going through, through it, it right now. Yeah, I guess I've kind of come out as I'm seeing dead people type person. I won't say it until it happens. And also autistic. Yeah, me figuring that out because that was part of my spiritual awakening as well. But and it's not you, it's just who you are. <laughs> yes, it's literally like literally doing this podcast has made me realize that I am autistic. And the reason why I've been alienated my entire life is because I am autistic and I think differently than other people. It's not because I have this like issue and I'm different and I'm weird and I'm like it, actually an alien and people just don't like me like I literally thought there was something wrong with me, but it's not. I'm just autistic. And it was like earth shattering when I figured this out because I was like, I needed that. And the reason I figured it out was because my spirit guides were like, watch this video on YouTube. Watch it. This is the only person you're going to relate to because she's autistic. (laughs) So yeah, we're on Facebook. We're on Instagram. We're on TikTok. I'm getting a new job, guys. So again, this is the second (laughs) It's a spiritual awakening, guys. <laughs> Second job in oh six months? Six months. Third job. Third, yeah, because the uh, first one was six months. That was a horrible place. Because you had the male job, and then you had... The other job that I quit that sucked. It the for- HR job? Basically. Oh, okay. <laughs> and then you have this job, and now you have this new job. That's four jobs. That's a spiritual awakening. Is it? <laughs> <laughs> um... Yeah, so hopefully our TikTok lives will be more consistent because I'll have a actual oh, normal schedule. I'm so excited. I, you should uh, land that out because I want to know when we're doing lives because I, I feel like it'll help us. Yeah, well, I also won't be waking up at 4 o'clock well, in the morning yeah. every day. And going to sleep at and, 12 o'clock at yes, night. Yes, literally Bradley 12 o'clock at night. has a different schedule as you. Uh-huh. Uh, for the past four, no, what? Wednesday, Thursday, Friday, Saturday. Four days straight, I've woken up at 4.15 and gone to bed at 12 o'clock at yeah. night. Uh-huh. <laughs> I, I, it's, not, it's not conducive. It's not working. To me. <laughs> so, with that being said, because you guys need to know everything about us, all we do is share our trauma with you to an extent. Uh, well, that's what, that's what this show's about. Maybe. It is. We're here to help heal you guys. And, Spiritual you know, awakenings help. are vulnerable. Yeah. We're just here to help. Take it for what you will. If you don't want to, that's cool, too. We'll still be friends. Get some root beer floats and do a jig. But okay. Yeah. <laughs> if you guys are interested in a reading, Liv is a psychic medium. She can talk to your dead people for you. Oh, my God. <laughs> she she I, can talk to your, your plants and your animals. I communicate <laughs> with souls. I should really just say that. Cross-functionally, I communicate with souls. Liv has a sixth sense of or seeing living. dead people. I don't... <sighs> Watch our other stuff. I have all the Claire's, all of them. It's really, it's really something. And um, I also do tarot readings. Yes. And we do bundle readings where we do them together, which is even more fun because it's wild. Yeah, you get to stare at both of our faces at the same time. As we don't listen to each other and talk to your, your dead people for you. Oh my God. <laughs> Not politically correct. Yeah, but it is funny. <laughs> it is funny. It literally makes me think that I like run up to somebody that's dead on the ground and I oh. just like start talking to them. Oh, I think of The Sixth Sense. I see dead people. I've never seen that movie. It's probably scary, so I haven't watched oh, it. Oh, yeah, that's why. That's probably why you think of actually walking up to dead people. And I think of the little child that says, I see dead people. I don't watch scary movies, so. It's a classic. A You're classic. a classic. It's an absolute classic. So, <laughs> <laughs> we'll see you in the next one. What are we talking about in the next one? Do you know? Dream interpretation. We are your meta sidekicks.